about and thinking, who is this guy? Dave Smith, MBE. Just stick him into a search engine and read his blog because it's extraordinary. This is David. He's a British Paralympian who aspired to ride for the UK Paralympic cycling team in the Rio Paralympics of 2016. However, he missed the opportunity in order to undergo a surgery for removing a spinal tumor. The surgery left him temporarily paralyzed. I started to develop real problems talking and I just started to, my legs started to drag as I was trying to walk. I just didn't look really well and I was really panicking my mum and, and I sort of lost all the functions of, of, of my body really and then I woke up one morning completely paralyzed from the neck down by my right arm. With not many options to choose from, he volunteered to become a patient at Immersive Rehab, a company that focuses on developing virtual reality software for physiotherapeutic purposes. In this video, we will talk about everything related to virtual reality and its use in the field of rehabilitation that helps individuals like David. Since the beginning of 1970s, the mass production of microprocessors have driven down the cost of personal computers, allowing them to be sold as consumer products on the market. Engineers and programmers alike speculated about the next big thing. One of such predictions comes from the invention of a head-mounted display with basic tracking and Fresnel lenses. This invention, called virtual reality, allows individuals to look around within a programmable virtual space. Many had speculated that it would eventually replace conventional monitors and become the next stage of how we interact with a computer. Heavy Metal is an amazing game where up to four players can compete against each other in a full virtual reality environment. A computer city, as you can see here. Controlling gigantic robotic walkers, the aim is to knock the stuffing out of anyone you can find. Most video game companies flooded to invest in the area with large sums of capital, and public interest followed along. But unfortunately, all enthusiasm ended when the headsets were deemed too expensive and too limited with the screen technology at that time. Fast forward to 2010, screen technology has finally caught up, and the market made an attempt to take off once again. Palmer Lucky, who was only 17 years old, built a virtual reality headset featuring a high-resolution display and 90 degrees of field of view. His company, Oculus, was later bought by Facebook. Other companies such as Valve and HTC collaborated as well to produce their own headset dedicated to their platform Steam. Naturally, the enthusiasm for consumer hardware prompted a wave of innovative indie software. Medical training became the most prominent use of virtual reality in the healthcare field. Precision OS, for example, is a company founded in 2017 that utilizes virtual reality to enhance training of surgeons. Their aim is to create a real simulation of surgery in an operation room. This includes being able to interact with human anatomy, surgical instruments, medical devices, and to be able to move around the operating theater itself. Other examples of medical training include Microsoft and their use of HoloLens which is an augmented reality device. Instead of replacing your vision, augmented reality attempts to enhance it by projecting computer-generated perceptual information into your eyes. Virtual reality is also currently being researched on its ability to improve the lives of patients suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, also known as PTSD. Post-traumatic stress disorder is a mental disorder that is triggered after experiencing or witnessing a terrifying event. This often includes having severe flashbacks, nightmares, or anxiety. Normally, people who experience a traumatic event will have difficulty coping with their emotions at first, but the anxiety and fear towards that event lessens over time. PTSD patients, however, will have these feelings that persist and even increase. Virtual Reality Exposure Therapy, also known as VRAD, helps to reduce a person's fear and anxiety, 
which can be done by actively confronting the experiences that a person fears most. By exposing themselves to those situations, they can learn to manage their anxiety and fear. For exposure therapy to be effective, the person needs to re-encounter the traumatic event. We can build virtual reality environments that allow patients to re-encounter those events, thus reducing PTSD in individuals. VRET was being used in a variety of different studies. For example, it was being used to treat Vietnam War combat veterans that were still recovering from their PTSD. These studies have found that following treatment, soldiers experience an overall improvement in their quality of life. It is also widely used to reduce other phobias such as claustrophobia, fear of driving, fear of heights, and social anxiety. Less than six months ago, Paralympic cyclist David Smith... Back to the story of British athlete David Smith. He volunteered in a study conducted by the company Immersive Rehab that hopes to use virtual reality software for enhancing the rehabilitation exercises he needed to complete. The main goal of this study is to determine the best way to stimulate neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is the ability for the brain to repair and reorganize damaged synaptic connections. This will require the ability for the patient to interact with the virtual world and perform activities that can stimulate neurons in order to regain normal motor functions. Visual stimulation serves as a critically important motivator towards the completion of rehabilitation exercises. Fortunately, these technologies became available in 2016 with the introduction of the HTC Vive headset. David was able to perform the required tasks in virtual reality throughout the study and regain his ability to walk after just 8 weeks of training. I would tell myself to treasure every breath I take and to never take it for granted. Virtual reality is still in its early stages and there are technological boundaries that still remain unsolved in today's consumer headsets. Slow adoption rate in conjunction with hardware limitations make it far from ready for mass adoption in the healthcare industry. Still, it is tempting to envision a future where virtual reality can personalize the field of rehabilitation and provide a more tailored experience to the patients. Experiences like being able to socialize with friends and complete exercises with other patients online makes it an important emerging technology. Needless to say, after more than 40 years since the first introduction of personal computers, virtual reality is finally here, and it is here to stay.